Good afternoon and welcome to St. Anthony's. Merry Christmas to all of you. Just before we begin Mass, uh, we have a brand new children's choir and the children would like to just offer a few songs uh, before Mass so if we could give them our attention as they lead us in prayer. Thank you. <clears throat> Good afternoon and Merry Christmas. Our opening song is found in the Missalette, number 61, O Come All Ye Faithful, number 61.
Good afternoon and Merry Christmas to all of you. And welcome to St. Anthony's on this beautiful, glorious day as we honor the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. We join together now and pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Friends gathered together as God's family, let us begin our Eucharist humbly asking for the Lord's mercy and forgiveness for our sin. For those times in our lives when we have failed to see you as the Prince of Peace, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. For those times we have failed to bring that peace to others, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. For those times we could not be at peace with ourselves, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> o God, who gladden us year by year as we wait and hope for our redemption, grant that just as we joyfully welcome your only begotten Son as our Redeemer, we may also merit to face him confidently when he comes again as our judge who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. I invite you now to please be seated as we listen to readings from Holy Scripture. The readings that we will be using for this afternoon's Mass are for the Mass of Midnight, which are found on page 33. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Upon those who dwelt in the land of gloom, a light has shone. You have brought them abundant joy and great rejoicing as they rejoice before you as at the harvest, as people make merry when dividing spoils. For the yoke that burdened them, the pole on their shoulder, and the rod of their taskmaster, you have smashed, as on the day of Midian. For every boot that tramped in battle, every cloak rolled in blood, will be burned as fuel for flames. For a child is born to us, a son is given us, upon his shoulder dominion rests. For they name him. Wonder Counselor, God Hero, Father Forever, Prince of Peace. His dominion is vast and forever peaceful from David's throne and over his kingdom, which he confirms and sustains by judgment and justice, both now and forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Please repeat the song response.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. Beloved, the grace of God has appeared, saving all and training us to reject godless ways and worldly desires and to live temperately, justly, and devoutly in this age as we wait the blessed hope, the appearance of the glory of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to deliver us from all lawlessness and to cleanse for himself a people of his own, eager to do what is good. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Lord be with you. And your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And so all went to be enrolled, each to his own town. And Joseph, too, went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David that is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to have her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were shepherds in that region living in the fields and keeping the night watch over their flock. The angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were struck with great fear. And the angel said to them, do not be afraid. For behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For today in the city of David, a savior has been born for you, who is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and laying in a manger. And suddenly there was a multitude of the heavenly host with the angel, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A few months ago, a man approached me and he asked if he knew anyone who would want an outdoor nativity scent. He told me the story that many years ago he had bought this beautiful set and now he and his wife um, wintered in Florida, so he no longer puts it up. And so I went to see it. It had a number of very nice figures as well as this huge, and I mean huge, 
stable, a bit oversized for the figures. I immediately thought of a home for it, our front lawn. But the figures were pretty worn down, and did I mention the stable was huge. <laughs> One of our parishioners, Cindy Cruz, an artist, took each piece over the month and meticulously cleared and cleaned and repaired each one of them. But I still had to make a decision. Should I use this huge stable? We had the other one from previous years, but that one was too small. So I decided, oh well, let's go big this year. And so I chose the large one. And the more I thought about it, the more that huge stable, I think, can be symbolic of our hearts. Is there room enough for Christ? Is there room enough for others? The stable is center stage in the Nativity story in Holy Scripture, as we just heard in St. Luke's account. The infant was laid in a manger, an animal feeding box. More than cute props that make for a nice Christmas pageant, the stable was the only place that Jesus, Mary, and Joseph were welcomed. They were wandering far from home, and the door of the inn, well, as you know, was closed. And so this drafty, creaky barn filled with cows and sheep and donkey and everything that goes with that, you know what I mean, <laughs> may be far from perfect or ideal, but it became their home, the first home that Jesus knew. The infant was wrapped in swaddling clothes. How many of you know what swaddling clothes are anyhow? Well, what it is, it's a tight-fitting blanket to help control a baby's body temperature and how particularly needed it would have been in that very drafty old barn. Now while stables come in many different designs and sizes, one thing they seem to all have in common. They're open. Few, if any, have a door. And because that stable was open, it became a place of a great miracle, filled with serenity and peace and love. That moment was transformed. That stable was transformed from a dusty old barn into a home filled with the divine. And it was from that place that all humanity was transformed. Now, sometimes we might look at our own lives as as messy as an old stable. The stables today are our homes, our families, our lives. And yes, they can sometimes be imperfect and messy like that stable in Bethlehem. And we might ask the question, well, why on earth would the living God ever think to make his home within me or within my messy family? But like that first Christmas night, God sent his son into the mess of humanity to transform it, to bring it hope, to bring it life, to bring it serenity and peace. All that he was looking for was a place of welcome. This Christmas, we have begun a new ministry here at St. Anthony's. We're calling it the Ministry of Welcome. You may have noticed some people at the doors of the church welcoming you to St. Anthony's. Their greeting is sincere, and I hope that indeed their presence there did make you feel welcome. 
Whether you are one of our regulars who have all but carved your initials in a bench, or family members who are visiting, or perhaps you uh, were moved this year for some reason to come to Christmas Mass, I want you to all know that you are welcome. We are glad that you are here. And more important, I think God is pretty glad as well. It's my prayer that you experience here, what you experience here in this time together might inspire you to open your heart today and every day in welcome of the Savior. Clear him a bit of, bit of space. Get rid of some of the accumulated litter in our life. And let's think big. Let the stable of your life not only allow Christ to be born in you, but welcome others into your life stable as well. Pope Francis has designated this year as a holy year of mercy, a special grace-filled year to reflect upon the greatest act of mercy, and that's what we're doing right now at this Christmas Mass, the greatest act of mercy, God sending his Son into the world in order to save us. Open your hearts today to God's mercy so that he might dwell therein. Open your lives to God's freely given love, to God's forgiveness. Open yourselves to his light to shine through all of your darkness. Open yourselves to his wisdom to see with new eyes and to love with a new and transformed heart. But friends, our challenge as his followers is to be that channel of mercy to others, to bring that mercy home with you and make your home a place where the Lord dwells. Think big, yes, but start in small ways. As Mother Teresa, soon to be Saint Teresa said, we are not all called to do great things, but to do small things with great love. Today, pray for the grace to forgive a wrong against you, to reach out to the neediest person at your table tomorrow, to embrace someone who's hurting or imprisoned by their sins or their hurt or their anger or their fear, and make your lives an open stable of welcome and grace. A great Dominican theologian, Meister Eckhart, once said this, what good is it for me that our Lord was born so many centuries ago if he is not born daily in my heart? My prayer for you this Christmas day is that you may throw open the doors of your heart to Christ so that he may truly be reborn in you and through you be reborn in the hearts and in the lives of all you meet on life's journey. Merry Christmas. Let us join together now and profess our faith as we pray together the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. 
For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now bring all of our prayers and needs before our merciful Father. For the church, may each of us announce the good news of God's, of God's saving love and be instruments of his mercy to all that we meet, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in the world and an end to violence and terrorism, may the Prince of Peace lead all to a new respect for life and greater cooperation with one another. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have traveled to be with us this evening, maybe from out of state, from different countries, we pray that each has traveled safely and will find peace in this their home. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for members of our military, particularly those who are in harm's way. We pray for police, for fire, for EMTs, for all who risk their lives for our safety. We pray that each may find their way home safely. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are seeking a spiritual home this year, may each of them find a community of welcome and understanding here at St. Anthony's. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an openness to the incarnation in our lives. May we allow the word to become flesh through our deeds of kindness and compassion in the truth that we speak and in our willingness to serve one another, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have gone before us, members of our families, members of our parish family, especially the priests, parishioners, and benefactors of St. Anthony's, may they share the life of uh, eternal life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we say a special, special prayer this evening for all of the children who are trying so hard to be good. <laughs> we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those who have asked us to pray for them, and for those intentions that each of us holds in our heart, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father of all goodness, we ask you to hear these our prayers as we offer them to you in faith through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we um, begin the offertory, this is the time of the Mass that we do ask for your assistance. Um, we'll, there will only be one collection uh, today for Christmas Day. Uh, have you keep in mind that I turned the air conditioner on today. <laughs> I actually did. The air conditioner is on right now. So thanks always for your support of St. Anthony's. The offertory song is in the Missalette, number 68, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, number 68.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness, we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we look forward, O Lord, to the coming festivities, may we serve you all the more eagerly for knowing that in them you make manifest the beginnings of our redemption. We pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, for in the mystery of the Word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in the love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and you bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Edgar, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all of us gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or we offer it for themselves and for all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living in truth. Celebrating the most sacred night on which Blessed Mary, the Immaculate Virgin, brought forth the Savior of this world, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, 
especially the glorious ever virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, and all the saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of your service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we may be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and the blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. I once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the glorious resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you've given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, all of your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, and all the saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not wearing our merits, but granting us your pardon 
through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all of these things, O Lord. You sanctify them, you fill them with life, you bless them and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be. This evening we will have a number of extra uh, sections uh, in which you can receive the Eucharist. Regular sections would be two in the uh, front here and two on the side aisles. 
We also will have an additional station in the middle aisle halfway back. And for those in the luxury box upstairs, uh, we will also have um, uh, someone go up to distribute communion up there uh, as well. If you are not sharing in the sacrament and would like to come forward to for a blessing, just come forward to the closest Eucharistic ministry with your hands folded like this, and we'd be very happy to just offer you um, the, the blessing of, of Christ on this Christmas day. The communion song is in the Missalette, number 74, Silent Night, number 74.
Let us stand now and pray. Grant, O oh Lord, that we may draw new vigor from celebrating the nativity of your only begotten Son, by whose heavenly mystery we receive both food and drink, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Just before our final blessing, I'd like to take this opportunity to first and foremost to thank the children in our new children's choir. They did a wonderful job today. And to uh, thank uh, Mrs. Pennington and also to thank Mr. Charles for the uh, pulling this all together in just a couple of months. So nice job. To thank all of you once again for worshiping uh, with us today, to also uh, uh, to remind you that at the doors of the church, the uh, host ministers uh, that greeted you will now uh, greet you as you leave and also give you a, um, a bulletin uh, that has all the different activities uh, and events that are happening in our parish family. Uh, you can always go to our website. Uh, to check anything that's going on and in this year of mercy we have some wonderful plans here at uh, St. Anthony so I hope uh, you will be a part of them as well. Uh, on behalf of um, Deacon Roma and all of our staff a, a blessed Christmas to all of you and, and the blessings of the Lord be with all of you particularly in the new year. Thank you and pray for me as well. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our celebration this evening has ended. Let us go in peace to have a holy and happy Christmas. Thanks be to God. And begin your Christian charity as you leave the parking lot today. <laughs> God bless you, and Merry Christmas to all of you. The closing song is number 60, Joy to the World, number 60. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare. Sing, and heaven and nature sing.